this video we're going to introduce the Euclidean spaces. So the first Euclidean space that we'll talk about and that we've seen before is denoted R1. So this is blackboard R1. Uh, and this is the real line, which you've seen before. And the real line is all real numbers. Uh, ordered from least to greatest. And our visual representation for this is just the number line. And usually it's drawn a little nicer, a little more straight than this. Um, then we put zero here in the middle. We have one here. We have two here, negative one, two, over here is say pi, somewhere over here is pi, all the numbers you want are there. The next Euclidean space, uh, and so this, these are Euclidean spaces because uh, they're named after Euclid of course, is the plane. Uh, so points in R2 are represented as ordered pairs. So we'll write them like x1, x2. And that's that's everything in R2. And uh, we also have a nice visual representation for this guy that you've seen before. Here you draw the coordinate axes. Draw an arrow to indicate that it goes on forever. These are the coordinate axes. So this is x1, this is the x1 axis. This is the x2 axis, and these are the coordinate axes. Um, here's the origin. So zero, zero will be called the origin. It's just a convenient way to name it. Um, and then we have we represent it kind of simply by saying oh, they're roughly like two number lines sitting here essentially. This is 1, this is 2, this is negative 1, this is negative 2, this is 1, and this is 2. And this is how you, how you draw things. And if you have an ordered pair A, B, for a point here that's A, and for a point here that's, say, B, uh, well, you just find the point such that when you look down at the x1 coordinate axis, that's A, and if you look over to the right at x2, or if you're over here to the left at x2, then you have B here. And that's exactly how you, you draw this thing. Our final space is 3 space. Now we can also draw that, draw that, but it's a little more complicated when we only have two dimensions here. So we denote that R3, and this is a three-dimensional space. And it's three-dimensional Euclidean space, in particular. And so what, what does this guy look like? Well, uh, I, I draw three axes, and these are our, all ordered triples. So I have ordered triples. x1, x2, and x3. And uh, I typically draw the axes like this. In three-dimensional space, that's across the origin. So this will be my x1 axis, x2, and x3. 
So we typically order the axes in, in this manner because it, it actually kind of matters, um, surprisingly enough. And again, we draw our number lines on everything. There's a number line sitting on every, on everybody. Number lines, there's a one, two, negative one, negative two, one, two, negative one, negative two. And you can see how things start to get really crowded when we start drawing three-dimensional space, right? Um, here's negative one, negative two, one, two. Uh, and how do we how do we uh, fix an ordered pair A, B, C? How do we find it? Well, we go up to, say, A here. This is our value for A. Um, and then let's say B is here. So I'm going kind of far out because it's uh, a little bit easier to draw. So I, I start at A on the X1 axis and I draw a line all the way out to the corresponding B place and this is the point, at this point, this is A, B, 0 and now I have to go up, uh, say, C many units so I have to go up, let's say C I go up C units here in this dimension um, so this would be, this point is A, B, C Now, uh, this is the last dimensional space, uh, last Euclidean space that we can actually represent graphically in a really nice way. Uh, the the letter, letter spaces are called uh, Rn and they're n dimensional Euclidean spaces. And they're just, we represent them as ordered n tuples now. And there's really no good way to draw this so that we actually understand what it looks like. And we're just kind of we're just kind of stuck in three dimensions. And you know we can kind of add one more dimension because of the time dimension, but it's it really doesn't have the same effect. Um, so we're just we're just kind of stuck at just having to live with this. Um, but it's actually very important to actually consider things in Euclidean space that has n dimensions, right? You might think that this is ridiculous. Um, but, for example, you could have x1 as, say, the GDP, you could say x2 is the unemployment rate, x3 is, I don't know, the price of oil. Um, you, can, you can encode thousands of economic indicators, say, in these variables. Um, and what's interesting is that sometimes the geometry, right, so the geometry, you would think these indicators, you know, that there would be no interesting uh, information encoded in the geometry of the space according to that but it turns out that the geometry of the space allows us to actually analyze data like that uh, which is which turns out to be really interesting uh, and so this is why in dimensional Euclidean space even for really ridiculously high dimensions like a billion you know is actually very it's a very very interesting space